Okay, here is our two radios. 10 meter, FCC certified. So pretty much the same radio in a lot of ways, just slight differences. Funny thing was this one didn't come with a cap over the USB. Unless somehow it fell off in the box and I didn't notice it, but this one did. Usually they come with this little green cap. You know, if you're going to use the radio, you're going to take that off anyways, but I don't know which ones you guys think looks better. I, honestly, I prefer the silver of the Walker 2 to the black. The silver just kind of reminds me of like the older style CBs, but nonetheless, I got the receive generator hooked up. We're hooked up to the Walker 2 right now. I'll show you guys that coax is going in the back. And we got our cyanide meter on. We're testing receive sensitivity for a 12 dB cyanide. And we have negative 113.7. And that's right at our 12 dB cyanide. So that's really good. Really, really good. So now I'm going to disconnect and I'll hook up to the Richard. We'll do the same thing. So just one second. I'm gonna actually shut the amplitude off. I just don't want, I don't want to hear the tone right now. So we just gotta switch cables over to this radio. First I'm gonna unscrew this, turn the volume down because I have to have a speaker jack hooked up and it, the volume's up almost all the way when we do our test. So let's plug in our external speaker into the Richard. We'll plug in our coaxial cable to the Richard. If anybody from Europe or anything is watching, I'm pretty sure your guys' Walker 2 actually looks like the Richard. It's black. So there is a difference. And the European Walker 2 has FM where we don't right now, but apparently we're going to sometime next year. They're going to, according to when I talked to President this week on the phone, they said that they're going to re-engineer all their 40 channel CBs to add FM into them. So I would assume this one would get fitted with FM. Uh, I'm not sure where they would probably put the mode selector. I would, I would think maybe Vox. If, if it were me, I would get rid of Vox and, and put a mode button there. But then again, if you look at our Richard here, we have mode, but we have WX. So I highly doubt they're going to get rid of the weather. I would much rather have weather on this radio than, um, well, talkback. You could do away with the talkback button too. Because you could do that somewhere else with like this radio, you key the microphone, I think you turn it on a different way or something. But regardless, uh, let's do the uh, sign ad test with the walk or with the Richard. So, so you just plug that speaker jack in. It didn't, oh, I put it in the wrong spot. That's why it's hard to see what you're doing when. I think we got it now. Just one second. Okay, no amplitude, that's why. So let's turn that back on. We need to adjust our volume level. Again, I set it for three, three volts. Okay, sign add. We were at 113.7 on the Walker 2. So we we're at 112. So we might be able to get a little bit more 112.5. Yeah, about 112.5. So it's not as good on the Richard. And that's kind of what I expected. 
due to the fact that the Richard has multiple frequencies where this one doesn't. So usually when you have a radio that is more optimized for a, only a certain amount of frequencies, it's going to perform better on receive. And as we can see, it definitely did. So, I mean, would you be able to tell that amount of difference? I mean, I, I really don't know, but just with the equipment, there's our 12 dB. You can definitely see that the Richard does not have as more, according to my test equipment, the, the Richard doesn't have as sensitive a, of a receiver as the Walker 2. So if you're more interested in receiver, which I would be, you definitely would get more for your money out of the Walker 2 versus this radio. So let's let's do something else while we're still here. We'll go up on 10 meter with this and we'll see if the sensitivity changes at all. Because this, by all rights, is a 10 meter radio. It's not supposed to do this, even though it, it can. It's not really what they designed it for. If you ask President, they would tell you, we designed this for 10 meter not for CB. We did design this for CB and that's why it's working better. And that's my opinion. So let's put this up to, I don't know. That's good, 28.555. So I'll move our frequency up. Okay. Give it a S9 for now. And it's pretty much stayed right at that three volt. So we'll go to sign in. Start our test. Nope, still not. It's pretty much the same one point. about 112.3 so even on 10 meter it's not as sensitive we're bouncing a little bit but yeah it's right there so again what are your advantages of well what would be your advantage to buy the Richard over the Walker 2 I guess if you only care about power, well, the Richard's going to beat it hands down because it's a 10 meter, so it's going to do more power. But feature wise, the Richard also has echo, more frequencies, but again, you can only use so many of them. Either you have to have a license. If you don't have a license, you can't use them legally. meters but it's basically useless because there's no sideband so unless you find somebody on 12 meter that's running AM or FM you're not gonna really be able to talk to anybody same goes for 10 meter all in this portion, you need upper sideband. If you don't have it, well, nobody's gonna probably talk to you on AM or FM. Now, if you go up here, there is a small portion up here where they do use AM. So you could use this on AM. Now, of course, you'd have to be licensed. And then if you move up in the band, in this area, you would have FM repeaters, but since you don't have the option to shift, you don't have a CT, CSS, or even a tone option, there's really no way to access a repeater that requires a tone. So again, it's not really useful for amateur use other than you can use it on AM. So, you know, that, that's really a bit about it. You get more power, you get frequencies, but again, unless you're into a little bit below one or a little bit above channel 40, you're not really gonna get much use out of that. 
I guess there is an FM skip channel. I think it's 26805 FM or something like that. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but you could do that. But it, the receiver isn't as good since we've just shown that. You come over here to the Walker 2, you spend less money. You get no weather, which to me, if you put this in a vehicle, you're going down the road. I think the NOAA weather would be more useful than having echo or having extra channels or any of that stuff. So you can set this to do a weather alert. You're just driving along. You could be somewhere you're not familiar with and something happens or the radio is going to tell you where this one, you're not going to get that. You have a better receive sensitivity. You're going to hear people farther out on this. You're not going to be able to get out as far because it's less power, but I'd rather be able to hear. I can always add something like that down there to it later to help me transmit farther. But the hearing part you're not going to get on this. Now, how much difference is that one point whatever dB going to make? I mean, I really don't know, but what I know is this is better based on the test. So... I can only go off what I see. And generally, when we talk about like ham transceivers, like I used to have what was called a Kenwood TS-2000, which would be commonly referred to as like a shack in a box because it went from the 160 meter amateur band all the way up to the 70 centimeter. And then in, if you had an optional satellite kit, you could get 1.2 gigahertz and stuff. Mine only went to the 70 centimeter, but again, that radio didn't have as good as a receiver as I used to have a Kenwood TS-480, which was just an HF and 6 meter. That radio had a much better receiver, and I didn't realize that at the time until I got the Kenwood TS-480, and I thought, man, the receiver is much better, and that's before I had all this equipment where I could actually do a test. I just heard it by ear, you could just tell how much better it was. But again, that TS-2000 was built. It had all that extra stuff with the 2 meter and the 70 centimeter were kind of like this test. This doesn't have all that stuff. It's less complicated. It has a better receiver. Less transmit power. More transmit power. Not as good a receiver. So, And again, it could just be this one. I could pull another one if I, I don't have one but if I had another one we'd test it. it could be different I don't know I think all the alignment process everything's done through computers on these because there's nothing you can adjust internally or even in the software for receive so however they build these it's all done by them and it, you can't change it the same for this but the Walker 2 is less money has a better receiver I think it looks better. I mean, the tops are the same. Pretty much everything else is the same. It has no weather. It doesn't have echo. Most guys could care less about echo. It has talk back. And all high cut. I mean, it has a lot of nice features. A lot of the menu stuff is the same. This radio, if you buy it, it doesn't work on CB out of the box. You have to pay someone to do it or else do it yourself. If you can solder two connections, you can easily do it. There's a simple process in the menu to reset the radio and then it will come on with the band. So there we are. And then you can also rename this. You can make it CB if you wanted to. So again, I think that a lot of CB radio operators are really drawn to radios by how much power output they do. But there's a lot of other factors. And like I just showed, the, the receiver is better on this Walker 2. It's less power, but I mean, you can always add power. You can't add receive. So that's my take on it. So that's about it for this one. I think... Uh, I think if I was going to put one of these in my car, which I've already had a Richard in my car before, and it did pretty good. I ran that standalone. But I think if I were to ever put another CB in my car, I would put one of these. But since I like sideband, I probably would put a McKinley in over both of these. But 
Honestly, right now I don't even have a CV in my car because I got HF and going on in there right now. But and I can monitor that if I want to. I can monitor CV, but there's something to be said about having a dedicated CB in the car, and I don't have that right now, so I'm kind of missing out on that. So when I get time, I need to get something in there. And honestly, I'd like to put this in there, but I know I'd miss sideband, so it's probably going to be a, a McKinley or something later. But that's it. Thanks for watching. Maybe that'll help people decide on which one they like better. I, I just, I used to think the Richard looked really good, but when I look at them both together, I don't know, I just like that walker too. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you care more about receive, if you care more about transmit, if you like echo, if you'd rather have no weather. I kind of gave my opinion. I'm just curious about you guys. 7-3.